We'll call the regular meeting in the Norm Economic Development Authority for Tuesday, March 10th, 2020, 8 a.m. to order. First item on agenda is roll call. We do have a quorum. We'll go on to item number two. Approve the minutes of the last meeting. So moved. Second. We got a motion second. Any discussion on it? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item number 3.1, administrative activities for the month. Heather. All right, good morning. Uh, you have the reports in your packet. I won't go through all the details, um, but I'll just highlight on a couple items. Um, note on the Section 8 report that we did um, enter into an AHAP contract with Emerson Union Apartments, and the first um, project base voucher um, leased up on March 1st. So we have four vouchers that we gave to that building, and um, so one of the four is now being used, um, and we hope the other three will um, be used uh, in the near future. Uh, those are for uh, long-term homeless households, so um, getting people into some stable housing um, is a good thing. Um, and then note under the uh, public housing report, uh, we met with the contractor for the Broadway House Tech Pointing Repair Project and had a pre-construction inspection on Thursday of last week and they got started on Friday. Um, it was determined um, during that inspection that the project will remain under 4,000 square feet, um, which is what they bid, uh, so we shouldn't see any change orders on the base bid for that project. We had to just kind of do an estimate because we didn't have the equipment to really get up and look at the building. Um, so the preliminary estimate was to keep it under 4,000 square feet and it looks like um, we'll be okay there. Um, note under the Small Business Incentive Grant Program, one application has been received and is pending approval. I think that's our first application for 2020. Um, and then under the Home Buyer Assistance Loan Program, one application was received and approved in February. Um, have received another one in this month as well. And then under the Garden Terrace report, uh, the LED lighting project is complete now. And um, when they got the new LED lighting, they noticed the entryway lobby areas could use a new coat of paint. So <laughs> that's been done and looks very nice. <laughs> 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 One of the <laughs> drawbacks. <laughs> um, well, Heather, remind me on the Home Buyer Assistant Program that started over now? Correct. As of when? Uh, January 1st, 2020. Okay. Another 50000 was... All right, thank you. Or, uh, there was a little balance that carried over, so okay. we made it um, that there was 50000 available again for the year, so... Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'll make an, a motion to uh, accept the Economic Development Authority Administrative Activities for the month of February 2020. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? See it none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 4.1, 2020 Capital Fund Program Grant Award and Amendment. Heather. All right. So uh, we received notice that our 2020 Capital <coughs> Fund Grant um, is in the amount of $106,297. And so um, now that we've received that notice, the EDA must accept the award and authorize the amendment. Um, and that's attached for your review. Um, so if there's no questions on that, we just need to pass okay. the. Just I'll the offer the resolution waive the reading accepting the 2020 Capital Fund Program grant award in the amount of $106,297 and approve the submittal to, eight, to the HUD for the 2020 uh, CFP amendment. Second. We have a motion and a second to offer the resolution. We have reading. Any more discussion? Uh, just a quick question. Uh, what does this compare to past years? Is it? Are we on a downward trend here? No. <laughs> they keep telling us we can't count on this money. We. Well, that's what I don't thought. We've had that discussion before. We used to get. 50, 55, 60,000 a year. Um, the last two years, 2018 and 2019, we got around 90,000. And I was just shocked to see this number. It, oh. it goes up. They 
they tell us we might not get anything. Okay. No, just you, you just never know what they're going to do. And <laughs> to clarify, this is just to be utilized with public housing units, right? Correct. Yep. This can okay. only be used for public housing modernization. So, and repair. so what does your wish list look like then, given that we've got this money? Well, um, we still have open our 2018 and 2019 grants. We are using those. Uh, the tuck pointing project that's going on now, we'll use the remaining 2018 grant and about half of the 2019 grant. And then we've also approved a concrete repair project mm -hmm. for the public housing units um, that will take up the remainder of the 2019 grant. So this um, money is available and has not been allocated as of yet toward any projects, but it's nice to know it's there sure. um, should something come up. Sure, something always does. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It sure does. Sounds great, Good. any more discussion? See you done. Does it call the roll? All right. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Yanni? Yes. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Schultz? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 4.2, EDA claims list. Um, I just do want to point out to you on this claims list, the last item for Von S. and Locksmith, we um, rekeyed the entire building at Broadway House, um, all the apartments and um, like the maintenance room doors, things like that. Um, what happened is the locks that we were using <clears throat> have become obsolete and we can't get parts for them anymore, so we're not able to change the locks. Um, so we kind of had to do it, um, but it is a good idea to rekey the building periodically, and it hasn't been done for about 15 years. And um, so we have a whole new set of master keys. You know, we do for the security of the building. Um, you know, it's good to have that done. So uh, we shouldn't have to do that again for a number of years. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? I'll make a motion to approve the EDA March 10th, 2020 claims list. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. We'll go on to item 5.1, draft. Uh, PHA five year plan fiscal year 2020 public housing agency is what it is um, Heather? Right. so you received the schedule for this process back in January um, so in March we bring you the draft uh, version of the plan um, and then the final version will come before you in April we'll have a public hearing and formally approve the plan um, I just listed uh, under um, primary issues to consider um, goals and objectives that were met during year five of the current five-year plan, uh, which covered 2015 to 2019, the goals and objectives that were accomplished. We were uh, recognized as a high performer for the public housing program. Um, we utilized our capital fund program grants to complete a pneumatic replacement project at Broadway House Apartments. We assisted a developer with their tax credit application. That was for the Emerson Union Apartments, and they were awarded the tax credits, and they are now open. Uh, we converted four Section 8 housing choice vouchers to project-based vouchers and entered into an AHEP contract with um, Emerson Union Apartments, and we utilized private EDA funds to create a home buyer assistance loan program. And then um, the draft plan is attached for your review where we outline our goals for the upcoming five years, 2020 to 2024. Anybody have any questions for Heather? Seeing none, entertain a motion. I'll offer the motion. Second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 5.2, retail strategies. Good morning. I'm, I'll take that one. Um, Chris is not here this morning. He's testifying in St. Paul on Highway 14. So, um, I get to talk about this one. Retail strategies, um, as you know, we've entered into a one-year contract with the possibility of additional years. Um, 
but what we're going to talk about this morning is a little bit of what's in the report and then maybe have a discussion about what you'd like to do coming up. So you can see in the report, and this is available online at the city's website if people are interested, is sort of their um, summary of their work so far. Um, there was a discovery phase, there was a prospecting and scope of work highlights, there's a retail recruitment activity, um, and you can see that they've done significant work on demographics, um, some marketing, they've represented New Alm at various conventions and things and have pitched our community to retailers. Um, so you can look at the report and just see where they've gone. I think some of the, what the conversation today is a little bit about what, they've, what the feedback was that they got. Um, some of it is about foot traffic that we are not really hitting the right numbers <coughs> for some retailers for foot traffic. Um, and so we think that this is valuable information. What we've gotten so far has been great and has been helpful. We've shared that information. Um, I have shared it with retailers. I have shared it with the Small Business Development Center. Um, so that's been really helpful. Going forward, there is the question of, are we a little premature? Do we need to get some more activity in our downtown and in our town in general? to get on the radar of some of these other retailers. So when you looked at the report, um, you could see the on page two, retail recruitment activity, there's some, uh, they say it's a sample of the feedback we have received. Please keep in mind that we are actively monitoring the expansion plans of retailers. Um, and then in there is the quick service restaurant says that at this time, they don't feel that the population numbers in New Alm could justify a location. I think this is a very real, real situation where you kind of have to know what you are and where you are and who's going to be attractive to you and retail strategies has been helpful with that for sure so what you know what is your sense on what the feet the information that you've gotten and the um, work that you've seen um, you know we're I would say that I'm happy with the quality of work that they've done th thus far um, how do they do their work is it emails? Is it uh, besides the conventions? You know the that they go to uh, phone calls. Yeah, they Just have a whole team of people that um, are working on different levels with things. Um, they work locally. They have people that are in our region, so they do. They have spent time in New Ulm and have talked to people. Um, that is mentioned in part of their outreach, um, talking to site selectors and developers. Mm -hmm. um, so they they have kind of feet on the street. And then they also have um, other people that go to those conventions and, you know, they're trying to make good matches too. You know, that's um, something we have to take in mind too, that they're trying to make good matches um, for the community and also for the business. You know, that's kind of their role in that whole playing out is how do we find the right retailer for the right community because you want it to work in the end. Good question. But it is, you know, they have a... Um, a way of connecting with the retailers and also getting a sense of from the community what would what would be a good fit. My question is, is it worth $40,000? Uh, the first year, yes. Going forward? <clears throat> I mean... Chris's recommendation was to not renew this. Um, no. If you recall, the first year, the chamber kicked in, I think, $10,000. The New Alm EDC kicked in $15,000. City of New Ulm, I believe, was $10,000, and the EDA paid $15,000. This year, those partners are, are probably not going to contribute, so the EDA would have to pay the full $40,000 or ask the city to do a 50-50 split. Um, I don't think we, we want to do that, and Chris's recommendation was to not renew. I know I was one of the folks that helped make this get this project up and running and they the first year is that research background in them and mm -hmm. which I think they did a excellent job in, mm -hmm. in getting us that information my understanding their second year is more like Audra said it's it's boots on the ground and banging on doors and going to these shows to larger companies saying especially um, Well, folks like um, Caribou Coffee or these chains and, and say, hey, we got a, a town of 13,000, what do you think? Um, so I, I'm nervous about cutting the contract because now they've done all that work and now we're just saying, see you later. 
Well, and Chris was thinking revisit it in maybe two years um, yeah. after maybe Highway 14 has been approved and is, is scheduled to be done. That might be helpful in recruiting businesses. Um, so he's not saying never go back, but I think he's saying for the upcoming year, let's put it on hold and see what happens with Highway 14. Highway 14 and some other things. You know, we've got some buildings, we've got some housing in developments. downtown, mm-hmm. more housing. How do we get the population right. to grow? How do we get that foot traffic to go? How do we support the businesses that we have here now to get some momentum um, so that when we put ourselves out there again, the package is is better. We'll be better positioned <coughs> to attract businesses. Is do we know for sure our partners are, are saying no? The chamber and the EDC are not going to okay. contribute. Um, I don't recall it coming up in front of the chamber. So maybe it's the chamber director maybe making that decision. But mm-hmm. um, That's what I was told by Chris. I could okay. be. I, no, I was a question. Um, I'm on the fence on this issue. I, 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 I'm, yeah, I am too. Be, and, and here's the thing. This, this information isn't static. So if we wait, it's, it's almost we have to start over again because the information that they've gathered now is all in real time. And I, I don't think we can work off of two- to three-year-old information and then try to pick it up again. And, and I think um, that um, as they move forward, they're going to be adaptable to things changing along the way, like a Highway 14, like additional housing coming into town. I mean, that's part of their job. I think to set it aside now um, really tells us then we're going to have to try to go this alone. I think the big thing they offer is the networking. They've got the resources and the contacts to go out. How do we offer an alternative to that. We don't have those kind of resources here locally to go out on a national level and seek out uh, retail partners for our community. And I think that's, and, and we're just getting into the crux of that now. They've done the background research. They know about what New Alm is all about. They know who we are. They, they, they understand from a retail perspective kind of what we're about. And, and I think they, and I, I believe you know, and all the conversations we've had over the last several years is that we're really wanting to transform our downtown area, and, and it's, it's very much needed. And these folks could play an integral role in that whole um, process because they've got those kinds of resources that we just can't tap into locally. So I, and I know it's a lot of money and it's a gamble because we put the money up front and then hope on the other side that they deliver. But I think at least I feel what they told us they were going to do in this first phase, they have delivered on. I don't think there's any question about that. So going forward, I would have to keep that thought in mind is that they would continue to deliver on what they promised to deliver. They've got very, lengthy experience in doing these sorts of things so I know it's a lot of money I don't know if the city is going to come through or not and go halvesies with us but I, I think we're into it now I think we should stay in it that's that's my thought my question is to Audra um, as following up on that to me this would totally change your workload if we say no we don't want to do this I would think this dumps a lot of work on you and have you had that discussion with Chris? And where do you see the future? I guess I would say I don't know if it changes my workload completely because downtown revitalization and um, pitching New Alm to retailers, it's just to a different audience. So, um, you know, I think it depends on where we're going to put our effort. And, right. you know, currently I'm working with retailers that are not chains, retailers that are coming Maybe they're expanding their current store or it's a brand new store. Um, So I think part of this is just the realization that, and we've heard this in the past too, that we just don't have the numbers for certain types of retailers. And if that's the feedback that they're getting, how do we continue to work on our downtown and on our retail landscape using the demographics they gave us? 
to boost that as much as possible, the retail traffic, but also the population. We're just kind of at that middle point. Um, if we if we don't engage them, we still have great data. If we do engage them for another year, the de deliverables will be very different because we have we have the concrete demographics. Mm -hmm. In year two, it is all about the relationship building and the networking, and we may not have that concrete deliverable. Um, so just want the EDA to be <coughs> aware of that, that the second year is very different than the first. Sure. They were negoti they negotiated with us a little bit on that 40,000 because originally they had travel in there and they had um, uh, all their travel expenses uh, were included in there that they were willing to cut. And because they found out that there's certain things that they can't recruit, are they? I wonder if they'd be willing to negotiate that 40,000. Um, that's, that's an interesting question. It sounds like from the EDA I'm hearing that you're still interested in being represented at the shows and things, um, but understanding that we may not be hitting that sweet spot, is there a way to negotiate a different sort of package? I do not know the answer to that, but that's a good question. I'd be worth, uh, to me, I think it'd be worth looking into. I mean, what do we have to mm -hmm. lose? I mean, March is our month, right? I think that's when we started our contract, if I remember so. correctly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I'm sure they'd be nice to maybe have them s over here talking to us about what they would present to us for the next year so we could all hear that and if they're willing to negotiate their price a little bit. Is that potential? Well, uh, I have a couple. Do you have an opinion, Andra, as to should we go forward with the second year or not? Yourself, what are, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are year two will be very different than year one. And year one gives you a hard deliverable, which meets the expectations. I think as long as we're clear about what we're expecting and they agree to that, at the end of year two, we'll be satisfied. Um, I have not been in the relationship at really at all, so I don't know what the, what the um, relationship is between retail strategies and our community yet. Um, so I can really go either way. I hear your point. Um, it is money. It is $40,000. Maybe you can get them down to thirty. dollars um, are there other things that could use that money that could really help with the foot traffic and help boost those numbers? Well, I have to believe that in some of those respects that you know, you know, Alma is not unique, and that wouldn't in year two they would be a partner in us developing strategies to increase foot traffic and to increase you know our retail presence in the region. I mean, isn't, wouldn't they be part of their tasks to do that sort of thing? I think it was, because they also said they were willing to come back to us and say, you need X new incentive plan if you want to bring in more businesses. Right. And to help us come develop up some way. strategies. But they, they have the experience that maybe we lack and, and the perspective and how they've been able to go into other communities, peer communities, and do these sorts of things. I, I look at it as we partner with them versus we go it alone. And if, if we decide to go it alone, then what's our strategy individually to do this sort of thing? I'd like to, be, I'd like to hear what we're gonna do. I don't think we should sit back and wait a couple years for the four lane highway to come. I, I don't think that that is a, a strategy to, in my opinion at least, that's uh, beneficial for where we're at today. And, and these things keep changing, you know, and, and it, it, one of our challenges, and it's a challenge of any retail business, is the, the whole online shopping thing. So we have to find what's going to work for us. And I think these folks are the most well-poised to, to, to help and assist us along the way. I don't know. I, I know it's a lot of money, but <laughs> we're, we're already into it. That's my thought is that I thought, you know, when we first decided this, we felt that really to be effective with it, if we're going to start it, we should finish it with them. Um, and I don't honestly see where us stepping out now is going to provide us anything with except some data. But I, I, the data is great, but what you're going to do with it and how you're going to respond to it is a whole other matter. And I don't see us having any other plan in place right now. If there's an alternative plan that we could come forward and want to do it locally, I guess I'd be open to that. But I guess we don't have a lot of time. I, either I mean I suppose they're going to want an answer sometime this month whether or not they want to renew this we have valuable data in front of us 
This is very valuable. We also have the future of a four-lane highway coming up, and we will know. You know, they want to bid by, what, 2021? People are watching that. These people who they're gathering will know whether that's going through or not, and let's be ready for them. Let's be ready for them to say, I now want to come to New Ulm. And that's the smaller businesses, that's your bigger businesses saying, I have been watching this, I want to now come. Mm -hmm. And, and let's grow. Let's be a community that just is gathering this up and, and moving forward. Austin so I say yes. Austin was a year ahead of us, if I remember correctly. Um, so I wonder where they're at with uh, retail strategies. And then there was the city of Blaine or Rosemount was the other one that had um, retail strategies working for them. And they were also, I think, a year ahead of us. So I'd be very curious to see where they're at as well. I mean, what was year two for them mm -hmm. and what was their outcomes? Mm -hmm. So uh, before we say no, I think I'd like to have that answer too. Did they cut and run? Or were they very happy with what they got? I mean, I know it's different demographics, both areas, mm -hmm. but um, but it still would be interesting to hear that information. Um, and if they could come down and talk to us, this is their money. Why not get them down here if they're willing to get Justin back down here to talk to us or mm -hmm. um, see what they're willing to say? So can we table this item? Is that maybe what I'm hearing? Thanks for more, more information before we decide. Sounds good to me. Kay. Jessica? Yeah. Um, What's the deadline for renewal? I did not get a deadline, so I'm not too sure. It was a March contract. I'm almost positive, but um, but I think they'll hold out until April. Could they present to the city too, maybe then, if oh, yeah. they did come? Because you know, if we're still looking, you know, to move forward and have you know those, see if there's still a chance we have partners willing to help with the cost. I don't know. Or a special meeting where we can invite both EDA and the City Council to a meeting. Chris could think about that. Or you yeah. about I'm how certain if they came that we would want to leverage that. I mean, yeah. as much as possible. It's good information. Maybe the, ne either the next good. EDA meeting or the next City Council meeting, whichever works better, right. maybe right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for them. And then let the other, other let the other one know. So. Right. Mm -hmm. What will bring the rolls? What will bring the donuts or, or, <laughs> Don't or coffee or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get all that ironed out. Yeah. So I'm going to offer a motion, because I think if we decide to go forward, then we need to talk to the city about are they willing to go half with us or whatever. Well, right, and, 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 and again, uh, it, based on what Heather has said, it sounded like Chris is not in favor of doing that. But I, I think the one thing we do not want to do is just set this completely aside and not do anything. So in my mind, if we're not going to fund this, then we have to come up with a locally right. planned uh, what we're going to do with this information to move forward. So that would be an alternative proposal that we could at least consider at our next meeting as well. Um, the plan B, if you want to call it that. So. Good discussion. I'll offer a motion then to table the retail strategies um, contract. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? The other th comment I would assume is this, or at least our portion is in this year's budget, I would assume, right? Because it would have been taken out previously, at least for we don't have our finance person with city. us, yeah. but I think it is in there. Well, in the cities, I'm assuming that portion's in there as well. What if it was 10 or 15? It's probably in the city budget as well. I don't remember. Good question, Les. We'll have to anyway. get back to you. Yep. <laughs> I can't remember. It might be in the EDA budget. I can't remember. All right. <clears throat> All right. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 5.3, letter of intent for Milford Heights lots. Heather? Right, so <clears throat> um, Audra, Chris, and I met with a um, developer from Eric and er Erickson Construction and Developing LLC, um, two representatives from that firm, um, to talk about the eight remaining lots up in the Milford Heights first edition. And they did present us with a letter of interest um, to purchase those eight lots for a total purchase price of $30,000. Um, I listed for you the eight lots in question and what we have them currently listed at um, as far as what we were asking for a sale price for each lot. Um, since the Milford Heights first edition was created in 2008, 
13 spec houses have been built and sold and eight bare lots have been sold. Um, so there were 29 initially in this um, first edition and we have eight uh, left to sell. If the EDA approves the letter of interest, staff would then proceed in negotiating a purchase agreement with the buyer. We would need to schedule and hold a public hearing prior to um, entering into a purchase agreement for the sale of the land. Um, that's required by state law. Um, the buyer is requesting a closing date of July 2nd, um, so we do have time to go through that process. Um, the buyer is intending to build two dwellings per year beginning this fall. Um, and uh, one thing to note, required under Section 3, Home Standard Part B of the Milford Heights Declaration of Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions to complete home construction within 18 months after the receipt of fee, fee title ownership of the lot. Um, the way they're wanting to do two houses a year, the EDA would need to formally waive that requirement as part of this um, sale. A similar request was approved for lots purchased by Habitat for Humanity back in 2011. Um, they built the first house and then they needed more time to do their fundraising before they could build their second house. Um, and they bought two lots. Um, the buyer would be responsible for assessments on the lots after closing. Um, however, because these lots are located in a TIF district, if any of the home buyers qualify for the TIF assessment forgiveness, the EDA would be required to refund to the developer um, for any assessment payments they had, they had paid to date for any TIF qualified lots. And we wouldn't know that until the time comes when, when they have a home buyer for each house. Would, th would that come from the, from the time period that they acquired the lots up till the time they sold the home? Yes. Hmm. Is that under state statute? <coughs> uh, I don't think it's state statute. I think it's just under the TIF district. Oh, that's scratch Okay. Um, okay. So as long as that TIF district is in place, eligible home buyers qualify for assessment forgiveness therefore then we would refund the developer okay so under this plan then it, c it could be theoretically four years from now or four years from the time that the lots were acquired that we would have to forgive um, assessments potentially because that buyer in that fourth year would be um, TIF eligible so we would probably have to budget for that, I want to assume, then, to just to make sure that right. those it, are Right, yeah, it would for. be a liability kind of hanging out there because it's an unknown. Right, um, but we're on the hook for them now anyway, we so, are. yeah, okay. It states here that the buyer intends to, is he required to? Well, that would be negotiated in the purchase agreement. Um, so if you wanted to make it clear in the purchase agreement that two houses will be done in 2021, 2022, 2023. You know, we can get specific in the purchase yeah. agreement. Because yeah. mm -hmm. um, I think it'd be a good idea if we're going to go this route and we're going to actually, be honest, lose money on it, I think we should get some houses built up there and get them on the tax roll. And right. I don't think you'd want to waive the requirement and just say you can <coughs> build whenever you want. I think you'd want to have maybe more of a formal schedule to hold them to that or, or say you have up to five years to have all eight houses started or however you want to word it in the purchase agreement. Um, well, I know we were talking about putting these lots up as a fire sale per se and, and <coughs> getting rid of them, and now we have an offer basically doing exactly that. Exactly. I've been on the CDA long enough that every house we built, we lost more than what we would lose on these properties. Mm -hmm. So I say we do it. I think we move forward. <coughs> um, I like the idea of uh, some requirement of, of house building in our purchase agreement, um, and I'm sure Roger can help us with, with that to mm -hmm. make sure that's included correctly. <coughs> but I like to see what other people say. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering whether, because it seems like we're almost giving this away, considering the cost of it. I mean, it's a total reduction of the of the lot price. Can't we give them just to Habitat for Humanity, you know, and let them do something with them rather 
I've That's approached Habitat for Humanity several times, and I've basically offered to practically donate the land to them. They are not doing new construction, just like we got out of new construction because of the cost. They're doing, they've, they've changed gears, and they're doing more rehab. They're purchasing homes, rehabbing them, because it's <clears throat> more cost-effective at this time. So they have not been interested in in building up there and for them and the way they operate it could be 15 more years before they would get all eight lots oh yeah uh, they only, i think they were only doing every other year anyway right i i think this is a much better alternative but you're right we were we actually had that on our agenda last month to um get your approval to go out and advertise for bids and do a fire sale and we pulled that because we were informed this developer wanted to talk to us and um you know who knows what we would have gotten had we gone out for bids and i think that last house that we built we sold at a major loss of 30 to forty thousand. so we can't build we just can't build it just it, it hasn't worked for us for so we said we needed to get out of the building business do we know like based on the covenants or what the developer intends the houses that they're going to build Will they be affordable housing, or do you know? It, does it restrict it? You know, like the sizing of the house and the covenants, or how? Well, the size of the house is restricted based on the lot size. Are are moderate, mm -hmm. small, and moderate sized lots? You know, they can only build so big because they have required <laughs> setbacks: twenty five foot from the curb, five feet on the sides. Um, there's a design committee that still there is a design is, review committee right mm -hmm. so any set of plans that this builder would propose would come to that committee for consideration so i think that there are some things stopped in there and i think heather's absolutely right y you're not going to get a, a large expensive home on these lots for the most part i think the thing that we have to look at is is the builders taking the risk on that part of it not us Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a huge consideration. The other thing that keeps weighing in my mind is, you know, we recently have agreed to give the park and rec a half million dollars for what we deem to be some economic development. This certainly falls within those parameters and our risk and our investment in this, even we're selling them at a loss, is what uh, considerably less than we've agreed to fund for, for those uh, renew projects. So I think this this the time is right we have a buyer i agree with charlie wholeheartedly that we should somehow in the purchase stipulate that they do build two homes a year we want to see this development come to a conclusion mm -hmm. in a reasonable amount of time and i think that considering they're taking on all eight lots <coughs> um, that we could certainly look at making an exception to that 18 month rule and, and, and stretching that out. If we get two homes a year out of there and they're able to build and sell them and then they're on to the next two, I think that that's a major step forward for us for meeting our housing objectives. You know, if you look at our housing study, this is a great way for us to, to participate in that. And um, I, I think the time is right. I think we should do it and, and move forward. It's almost, if we looked at it the opposite way, we're almost uh, setting up an incentive for them to buy these homes or buy these lots and build a home. And just another way of looking at it. I'm going to offer a, a motion to authorize the executive director to sign a letter of intent for the Milford Height lots. I will second. I'm asking, however, though, that the word, that the language be oh. put in there that they will build, they will yes, build two I houses per year. Agree. And if we waive that 18 month, mm -hmm. that, um, that that strongly gets put in there. Yep. yep, and I did make a note of that to pass that on to the city attorney when he's drafting this. Yeah, we'll um, have, the a purchase, we have, yeah, we'll have, have a public hearing. We have to have a public hearing, hearing and the yep. um, purchase agreement would come before you for approval. Okay. Uh, we're planning to do that at the next meeting now that we know you want to move forward. Um, the other question I have is um, they didn't say anything about earnest money typically we've asked for a thousand dollars per lot in earnest money I'm not suggesting that we ask them to put eight thousand dollars down but do you want there to be an earnest money payment at the time of 
entering into a purchase agreement, or are I you okay be. with that? Standard. 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 It has yeah, to standard. be some earnest money. And it don't have to be per lot. It can be as a sale. So exactly. What, what amount would you like 5, to ask? Yeah. Why not? Good. Why not? 5000 Why yeah. not? I'm good with that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And th we'll that could be motion. negotiated. I don't have a problem with. Okay. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item, no, item number 6.1, EDA priorities and strategies. Audra? Yep, okay. So at our last meeting, we had a good, healthy discussion. Everybody chimed in about what priorities and strategies were on your minds for this group. Um, Heather and I took some ferocious notes, and um, what is before you now is sort of just a summary of that discussion. Um, we added, so there's three pages here. Um, we There's a page on the 2019 progress, and that's just a summary. It's always good to look at where you have been, where you have put effort, um, and so I don't feel the need to read through all of that. Um, clearly, you've been here, so that's not necessary, but it is good to see the, the progress that was made in 2019. And then in 2020, this is where uh, our discussion was last month, um, on some of the thoughts, ideas, things that came out of our discussion where um, we looked at those four pillars. I really like that we've adopted sort of that language of the four pillars of economic development. I think that that's guiding our discussion and keeping focus um, of housing, business attraction, business retention, and workforce development. So um, Heather, in her wisdom, did do kind of a short-term, intermediate, and then long-term, um, just to kind of set some sort of timeline around that discussion. Um, and so I know that you've had it for a couple of days. Do, is, are there things that we missed, first of all, that you want to make sure get on some sort of document like this? Well, not necessarily miss, but how about added to? Added to <laughs> is great. Okay. <laughs> Not uh, attitude, but added to. Well, <laughs> I, ha I had a discussion with the developer, and and I, I hear this over and over again. You know, all the fees they have to pay to build a house or build a property. What if we were to consider a grant program similar, similar to the small business grant <coughs> that we could offer a, a grant to cover some of those costs for builders if they were agreed to build homes with our properties, residential, single unit, or multi-unit, that we could defray some of those costs by a grant program. We set aside so many dollars a year, first come, first serve. I think it offers a clear signal that we are pro-growth, we want new housing, we're, we're gonna do our part to try to, and I don't know if 5,000 per, uh, you know, a grant applicant would be appropriate, but maybe, if we could do a little research, what the typical cost would be and yeah. what parameters yeah. we would want to include on that. But I know there's hookup charges with the utilities, there's building permits, there's platting costs. You know, some of those, um, I guess, I don't know if they categorize those as soft costs, but you know, just to get, uh, and it's one of those things, it's not necessarily the biggest fees that get people riled up, it's some of those nickel and dime smaller fees, a few hundred dollars here, a few hundred dollars there, and they add up. But I, I think it would send a message that we want new builders to come to town and this is what we're willing to do. So don't mean to, because it's so beautiful. The color, <coughs> the color coding and everything and the don't way it's laid out. Don't get distracted, it's about content. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. That's a great idea. But and anyway. Some I, of you, these are already outdated with the number Yeah, the lots, is. I know. <laughs> Scratch that one? Nope. No, anyway, but I, I, I just so after that, that discussion, I'm thinking, and, and they brought up, well, can I get the small business thing? I said, well, the parameters aren't really the same. You know, you've been in business a while. Maybe this is something for us to explore, you know, and yeah. maybe we decide, a well. Developer grant or yeah, new something. Construction. Yeah, con new, construction new construction just to get the some of the local fees. Well, I know people are going to say we're going to rob Peter to pay Paul. The money's going to come to the EDA and go to the city or go to 
PUC or whatever, but I, I think the message it sends is what really what we want to try to do is say, you know, from the EDA perspective, we want you to come to town. We want it's you to build. It's an investment, though. That money comes back. You get new construction. You're getting more property taxes. Right. You know, it's Ultimately, a, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway. It's a payoff. That is a good idea. I don't mean to, to, to throw everything in turmoil there, but I, let's just add one somewhere. That is not turmoil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to junk the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. Any other additions or things that you've thought of since last month that you want us to I throw in there? I thought we talked a little bit more, and I'm just reading to make sure I'm not missing it, mm -hmm. is the daycare. I know we have a little bit over on the in workforce the development, but that's just a one-day training. Not that that's, I think that's really important. Well, under intermediate, though, there's potential acquire rehab building for lease to daycare provider under business attraction. It's actually under business and attraction, under business retention, business yeah. retention yeah. and yeah. workforce development. Yeah. It gets three bites at the apple. Yeah. Maybe sure. it needs to be moved up a little bit more, maybe then. Because um, we know that's a major issue, so I don't know if that should be an intermediate goal or more of an immediate goal. Because last month we talked about that stay and play business that's sitting there with a $500 issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we know where that's at at all? They're so close. That's what I, I just keep mm -hmm. hearing, and I but don't I'm know what will help them to get to the finish line. But as we talked a little bit last time too, and maybe it was after the meeting that if they decided no, we're just we just can't do it, then I think we need to be looking at should the EDA purchase the building and then hire someone to run it. I mean, just we need to be thinking that route. Um, I mean, we know it's a major issue, but so it'd be nice to know what their thoughts are. I mean, I know when I walked by the other day, it looks like they got everything inside, too. I mean, it looks like it anyway. So it's like they're ready to go. Just that, they know. just aren't ready to go. They, they just aren't ready, ready to, go, to they open. They borrowed <laughs> a ton of money from the buildings our ready. programs, right. right? Right, and they're making payments. They're making payments. How are they making I don't know. You you think like they want to have If they need income. a little bit more of a encouragement or push, what do we need to do to get that running? Or I don't think there's anything we can do. I think they've been talked to multiple times by multiple but city staff. But if they've staff. been given the offer, it's like, if you're not going to do it, is there another option? Are you willing to sell it? Or are you willing to lease it? Yeah, I don't know if that, that hasn't been the conversation. Probably hasn't been a conversation because yeah. we haven't talked about it yet. Mm -hmm. um, but it'd be nice to know if that's, no, we don't have any interest in that. This is ours. We're set. We're going to open in June or whatever. If, if you feel that child, I would say that child care is still a, a pretty high priority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's restricting our yes. workforce development. It's restricting mm -hmm. um, businesses from growing because they're trying to get people in that can't find child care. So I would vouch that it was is still a, a critical piece. Yeah. Um, you know, what would you like to see next time? Would you like to see like a... 30, 60, 90 a year plan on child care just so that we have a path to take, um, you know, just to yeah, kind of get. Yeah, I'm not just talking about this particular place. Right. I think in general we need to right. be um, mm -hmm. doing more than that one day training, which I think is incredibly, having been part of that project a couple of years ago, that was critically successful mm -hmm. for our smaller home daycares that they get all that training done in one day. It was just huge for them. They love that option. So I think keeping that moving is really critical, but it's not enough. You know, there's still other, right. and it's a combination we know from what we've learned is that it's gotta be the larger daycare and the smaller ones. And we talked a little bit about could one of the current larger ones expand and take on 20 more kids if they got some help with a loan to, to make that happen. I mean, so yeah, I think I would like to see something more concrete like that if we could go out and then my other thought is maybe we need to do a, um, a, a way of rating these between us. Great. Like Good. A, just a prioritizing. Yeah. Yep. What, what's our highest rating of all of us? What do we agree on should be highest and lowest? So. In fact, you know, just on time wise, I that was where I was going. Okay. Is, um, you know, we kind of broke these out as to kind of where they are, in mm -hmm. short term, long term, yep. kind of in the middle. You know, if, if you want to go back and send an email back to Heather and I with your top five, you know, these are the hottest things, that would be great, and that would give us a sense of, of where this group is at, and we can bring that back. But we can also take a look at that and see if there's some themes there that um, really can guide our time. You know, there's 
we want to make sure that where we're spending time is where our efforts need to be. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of needs represented on this sheet, and we want priorities and resources to kind of match up a little bit. Um, you know, we can go back now and sort of update this because of the Milford Heights movement. Um, and this is this is not a plan. This is just a listing right. mm-hmm. of. This is not a plan because we need you to do a little bit of on that prioritizing, and then maybe by next month we can put out a little bit more of a plan. Yeah, and this will be a living document. This will need to be right. updated yeah, like frequently as things change and as things get accomplished. We need to take them off and put new mm-hmm. goals on and. Would it make more sense for you folks to clean that up and then maybe send it out to us with a, a rating sure. system? Um, yeah, we could do that. That might be cleaner. Yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> I didn't want to bring the colored dots today. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've all done that numerous like times. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. Um, that, yeah. I, 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 I like the discussion, and we're continuing to move forward, and I thank you for, for, for doing this. I think yeah. this is going to give us a greater sense of focus. Mm-hmm. It's a good visual aid for us. And visual, too. And mm-hmm. then on the third page, um, we oh, haven't yes. touched on yet, just some financials. Um, Jessica had asked for that, mm-hmm. and Nicole put that together for us. Um, and I was hoping she'd be here in case there were questions on that, because I don't know if I'll be able to answer them. But gives you an idea of our financial picture um, and, and what, what we like have available. What I'd like to do is put this on helpful. the agenda for next month, the financial piece of it, and just spend five minutes on financial summary overview Sounds great. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll go on to item no- number 7.1, Economic Development Director, Assistant City Manager, Activity Report. It's in front of you. You got yes. anything you want to talk about on it, Audra? Well, you can, um, just based upon our previous conversation, you can see there has been some significant activity on child care, a multifaceted issue, um, not just in our community but statewide. Um, and this also engages the Small Business Development Center, surprisingly enough. Um, there is, you know, Wendy and I are having some conversations with people about, you know, what, what are the resources available to um, child care providers. Uh, great relationship with Brown County licensors. They are being helpful with information. And um, also, you know, I got a call last week, uh, providers looking for grant or a loan, and I had resources to provide. So um, that felt really good that we are able to, to help on that. I did my first commercial rehab loan with a local lender, so that feels good. Um, it's a process, and uh, I have a checklist of from point A to point B because it is not something I've done before. Um, we are just really doing well with the SBDC appointments. In fact, we've had to increase the amount of time I had to get a conference room for more visits. Um, I think they like having the stable location that is um, private and confidential. Um, I was able to join a consultant on one of the sessions, um, and this is a different consultant, but it was with a local business, and um, brought me in to be able to talk about what the city incentives and programs are to that person um, so that the (coughs) the consultant could hear what is also available. So I think there is a connection piece there of for the people that are working with our businesses to, to develop and to grow, we need to make sure that we have those relationships too, that those consultants are also aware of what we have. Um, mm. They may be able to help the business owner see where that fits into their plans. So that's been some work. Um, and finally, our agreement with SBDC has been signed. It's March 10th, <laughs> but um, the process took a while, but that has been signed and sent back. So any questions for me? I'd be interested if you get any feedback from the consultants, how we compare maybe to other towns with incentives, if, is there learning about what we have to offer? Um, if, you know, they do hear of things that w- work in other towns or, you know, through their network, it'd be sure. interesting to bring that back to us. Okay. I know there's a, there is excitement about that small business incentive program grant. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the hiccups with that has been that it is, if, if it's a succession, like if someone's purchasing, a business that really does not apply to them. Mm. So um, I look at business owners as risk takers. 
-hmm. And certainly if someone is starting a new business, that's a risk taker. If somebody's um, starting a new business in a building, um, but also t buying a business and being that succession plan um, is is a risk too. So I maybe that's one of those new incentives that, that, that we were talking yeah. about. So exactly. maybe that is mm -hmm. something that I mean they they can get great services from the SBDC. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the programs that are available to new businesses, sorry, are available to them, but just that ten thousand grant is not. So yeah. something to think about. Okay. Well, and maybe we develop a growth grant for existing businesses. Yeah. You know, if they're a succession plan would be with the hope of future. We don't want to lose a business, right. and and if if if, there, if you've got somebody who's retiring and selling out, then maybe, or maybe that's you look a at need the we could fulfill. Loan, right. Which is at five. Right. Is there a way to a limited loan 2.0? Yeah. You know, that just is in a different category. Right. That's good. Good idea. Sounds I'll good. A motion to accept the report. I'll second. We got a motion to second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. With no more business, meeting adjourned.